Welcome to the Office Hours. My name is John Fia. I chair the History Department here at Messiah College and I also teach American History. Uh, this is episode 12 of the Office Hours. I am here in my office uh, with Megan Piet, our faithful filmer and producer uh, of these videos. One of these days we're going to get Megan on camera. Maybe we'll do an interview with her about, uh, about the virtu making the virtual Office Hours. <laughs> Uh, but what we want to talk about today, uh, I, I look at this kind of maybe as the last office hours in a series that we've been doing. Now, we've been interrupted here and there with some interviews and opportunities that we've taken. But I think this will be the last, uh, the last segment in a series we've been doing on how to think historically and what you know, the, the purpose of a history major, what history majors can do, and so forth. If you remember, we started back thinking about the five C's of historical thinking. We talked about the past as a foreign country. We talked about the usefulness of the past or the usableness of the past. I suggested some ways in which Christians might think about how to reflect on the past, like sin or the Imago Dei moral criticism, these kinds of things. Uh, we talked about history for a civil society a uh, couple, couple episodes ago. Uh, and now I want to wrap this up with a discussion about the history major and what you can do with a history major. So I'm talking here directly to those of you who are either in high school or in college or have kids who are in high school or in college who are interested in history and want to think about, you know, why major in history? You know, when you can major in something else, you know, that might be more, at least we might think might be more beneficial in the marketplace uh, and so forth. So that's where we want to focus our attention today. Much of the, the material that we've been doing in the virtual office hours uh, will make up, makes up, as I have mentioned before, the bulk of my book, Why Study History. Uh, and that'll be out in September. Uh, I think the subtitle is Reflecting on the Importance of the Past. So many of these virtual office hours uh, segments will appear. Uh, in print form, at least, in prose, uh, in that book. So I hope you'll grab that book and you'll, you'll take a look at it. But the question here, what, what can you do with a history major? Uh, we, I've been wrestling with this question. I've been wrestling with this question with my students. Let me start off by telling you a little story uh, about a student of mine named, a former student of mine named Tara. Tara was a history major. She was a one of our better history majors here in the department. Uh, when she graduated, she applied for a job working in a hospital for sick children in Malawi, the Republic of Malawi in Africa. I mean, this was not some kind of Peace Corps work or she wasn't a missionary of any type. This was a, this was a job she applied for. The job called for someone to be, uh, I think the job title was an embedded blogger within this community. And the job description was, was basically Tara would spend time uh, during the course of the day with the parents of the African children and the children themselves, and then she would report on uh, what she saw and, and you know, their experiences and their stories uh, for people back in the States who were reading the, the blog of the hospital. Uh, so they would be able to know how to contribute or you know, make contributions and so forth or find out just what's going on. Uh, when Tara interviewed for the job, one of the first things that they asked her was, why, why are you applying for this job? You were a history major. Now, inherent within that question was a common misconception about what history majors do. Obviously, many people think history majors just sort of are very good at trivia because they memorize facts and dates and so forth, and they're good at taking tests. Uh, but that's not the case at all. Uh, Tara seized the opportunity uh, when asked about her history major, and she said, you know, why wouldn't I be a leading candidate for this job? I've just spent four years uh, spending time with people, so to speak, people living in the past, uh, many of them being dead, but listening to their voices from the documents that uh, I've studied and read, the primary sources, and then what did I do? Well, I would write papers. I would tell their story. I would empathize with these people, try to understand life from their perspective, and then tell the stories of their experiences, whether it be in a paper, whether it be in a presentation, uh, whether it be in some kind of exhibit or, or a digital project, whatever it was she happened to be working on here in the history department at Messiah. Uh, so, you know, think about the job. She was being asked to uh, spend time listening to people who are different than her, Malawi children and parents, uh, listening to them, and then telling their stories. 
Uh, she, she learned as a history major not only sort of fundamental skills about writing well, listening well, researching, taking information that she had learned in the course of the day or in the course of her field work and writing it up and making it presentable to uh, outside audiences. But Tara also learned these deeper skills that we've talked about here, skills like empathy and understanding and trying to walk in the shoes of people who are different than her. Needless to say, Tara got that job not in spite of the fact that she was a history major, but because she was a history major. And I think if we can have more Taras out there, if we can teach our students uh, that they have certain skills that employers want, I think the stigma of sort of what can you do with a history major uh, may just go away. As some of you know, uh, on my blog, The Way of Improvement Leads Home, I have interviewed uh, up to, I think it's up to 40 now, uh, individuals who were history majors in college uh, and did not go the traditional route that most history majors go. Most history majors either go to grad school in history, they become history teachers in public and public and private high schools or elementary schools, they go to law school, uh, they work in a museum or historical society. But the people I interviewed were people who did not go into any of those fields. They went into business, they went into medicine, uh, they went into computers, they went into writing, they went into journalism, uh, they went into uh, the ministry, a host of different fields, and asked if they would do it again, if they had to go back to college and knowing what they know now in their professions, if they would major in history again, they all said that they absolutely would because history provided them with the kinds of skills and the kinds of virtues in many cases that allowed them to really prosper in their current, uh, their current job situations and do very, very well. So I'd encourage you to go check out that blog series, uh, So What Can You Do With a History Major? Maybe we'll get an image of that up here uh, when we move this thing into production. One of the readers of that blog series was a man named Brian. Brian is the CEO of a major finance corporation based in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and he read my series on what you can do with a history major, and he sent me a nice letter. Uh, and this is what he said in that letter. He said that any good and well-rounded liberal arts education is a strong foundation for business. Ultimately, you have to be able to write, speak, and think. Still, for me, history is singularly the best discipline for success in business. Now, you can imagine how shocked I was to read that, right? I'm sure the people in the business department uh, here at Messiah College might be surprised too. But, but Brian goes on to say, In history, you learn and become immersed in why people and groups do things over an extended period of time. History validates that people and organizations act in clear, recognizable patterns. You can learn about human nature. Behavior becomes very predictable, which is vital in the field of business. Uh, again, that's just one example of how history historians can, can use their skills. I was recently at a conference uh, at Wake Forest University in which I heard several CEOs of 500, Fortune 500 companies saying, we want liberal arts majors, we want history majors because they can think, they can write, they can take small pieces of information and make meaning out of those small pieces of information. They can take data and tell a story about the data. Uh, you know, they, they, all, they all said to a, to a person, they said, we'll train you in how we particularly do business, whether it be at Procter & Gamble or at this bank or whatever the, the, the company might be. We'll train you in the particulars, but we want someone who's able to have those general skills. In many ways, it's a great point. Most studies show that today's undergraduate students are going to change jobs and maybe even change careers or professions seven to ten times over the course of their lives. That means they need those fundamental skills of writing, of thinking, uh, of speaking, of empathizing, of listening, of understanding, uh, that well-rounded history education or generally humanities-based education that's going to help them to adjust and adapt to the changing marketplace. So when students tell me I would like to major in history or what can I do with a, a history major, I tell them several things. One, if you're picking a major, follow your passion. You don't want to spend four years studying something that 
you know, you have no interest in interest in it or you find boring, but it may help you land some kind of a job in the future. Follow your passions. And I think people who follow their passions, uh, that kind of passion will translate uh, to potential employers. Pot employers are looking for people who are passionate about, about something. So follow your passions. If you love history, study history. Uh, and, and don't worry about you know, where you're going to end up in the end or what kind of job you can get. Uh, because as I'm suggesting, there are lots of jobs out there that you can do uh, by studying the past. Second, though, it's not going to get you anywhere if you study your passion, uh, but you don't act strategically or don't develop a confidence in the kind of skills that you're learning in studying history. It's one thing to master information. It's one thing to learn these skills, but you need to be confident and develop the confidence to be able to sit before a potential employer like Tara did and say, here is why you should hire me as a history major. These are the skills that I bring to the table. Here's how I can help your business, your nonprofit organization, uh, whatever it happens to be, uh, whatever the job happens to be that you're applying to. This means, I think, that history department cultures need to change. Uh, when, I was a, when I was an undergrad or when I was in grad school, uh, history departments, undergraduate history departments, celebrated the student who got accepted into a prestigious, maybe Ivy League PhD program. And that was the person that appeared all the time on the promotion literature. That's the kind of thing that people, the professors in the department, the kind of person they talked about over and over again. But what if the culture of a history department changed to such an extent that instead of celebrating those people, and granted, we still should celebrate them, we also celebrated the people who got person who got a job in business, or someone like Tara who went overseas and served uh, in this hospital, uh, or someone who went into medicine, or someone who went into computer science, or somebody who became a journalist, or someone who went into criminal justice, or something like that. What if those people were celebrated in our departments? Uh, just as much as the people who get into the prestigious law schools and graduate schools. Uh, so these are some things to think about as to why we should study history. There are jobs out there. We need the confidence to be able to talk about the skills and the talents and the gifts and the training that we have as historians uh, to be able to make an impact uh, on the marketplace, the ever-changing marketplace. Uh, so I think this is a nice sort of capstone uh, to what we've been talking about the last 10 or 11 episodes here, give or take, uh, with a few little uh, sidetracks here and there. Uh, you know, history, historical thinking skills, learning how to use the past and make the past speak to the present, understanding the past as a foreign country, uh, thinking about the role of history and cultivating a more robust democratic society. Uh, those are all good things, and they're things that need to need to be thought about by history students. Um, but also, there is a marketplace out there for the kind of skills and talents and gifts uh, that all of us have. So uh, we bring this conclusion to an, uh, this uh, section session to an end, uh, this series to an end, if you might want to call it that here on the office hours. I'm not sure what we're going to do yet uh, next week, but we'll have, definitely have something for you. Uh, make sure you get your hands on that book in September, Why Study History, Reflecting on the Importance of the Past, and we will see you next time. Thank you.